What's up, XFI enjoyers? XFI on Twitter has just released a new article talking about matchmaking exactly one week ahead of its release. So let's get into it. So here is the article. It's a simple four minute read, talk about matchmaking, and I will take this link and I will put it in the description if you want to read it more in depth. To start things off, XFI team gives us some heat right off the bat. They say, the most important thing to know is there is no skill-based matchmaking in our casual playlist. I'm gonna come. I'm going to paraphrase the rest of this, but essentially they say, if you want a skill-based matchmaking experience, just play ranked play. That's what it's for, for people at your skill level. It's just called ranked play. They are very, very adamant on no skill-based matchmaking in casual playlist. Let's go. All right, matchmaking factors. We have casual play and ranked play. You probably all know that by now, but did you know that ranked play for the first six weeks, I believe for the first season, it's just going to be kind of a warm up. Real ranked play in ELO and actually seeing your rank will be added in a future season, most likely season one. It is what it is. Now for the best part about this article and why XFI's transparency is amazing compared to games like Call of Duty, which took it months to release something like this. <clears throat> Excuse me. So casual play, top down, descending order of priority, latency is first. It prefers similar pings above all, ping is king, you are going to get matched into your lobbies with the best ping possible, and then the balancing happens, which we'll go into in just a little bit. Number two, avoids certain players. So if you have muted someone and or blocked someone on X Defiant previously, this will restrict your matchmaking to not be put with them. So that's pretty good. Now, party size. This is actually fantastic because if you're solo queuing, in most cases, the prioritization on the matchmaking will make it so you're not facing a six man you will only face a six man in most cases if you're in your own six man so that's fantastic hopefully that makes sense and of course prefers players from the same region you know that's the same thing kind of with ping input device this is fantastic i mean if you don't have the input device you know option enabled where you can choose if you want to face your only your input this is still going to prefer players using the same input so if you're on controller no matter what by default by default, you will be facing controller players. In rare cases, you will face keyboarders. And then opposite, vice versa, you get the point. And then platform, same sort of deal where it's going to prioritize your own platform, say PS5 versus PS5 first, and then PS5 versus other platforms as a, you know, last case scenario. All right, on to ranked play. For all you ranked play enjoyers, it's basically the same exact thing, but your RP, your rank points are prioritized first only matches within an acceptable rank range. Now, of course, we don't know exactly what that range is, and that's probably what the preseason ranked play is for. So they can do testing and make it as best as possible for user experience. And then the same thing, we go down the list of latency, prefer similar ping, party size, region, input device, platform, etc. However, one thing that is interesting to note is that it does not prioritize avoided players. So if you have muted or blocked someone in the past, I guess it is possible that you will still face them in ranked play. What are we thinking about that? So I'm assuming you are satisfied with everything I just mentioned and you're happy, but it gets even better in this additional info section. So let's get into it. Team balancing. Once a lobby is popular, teams are balanced based on player skill rating. The casual lobby is not use skill to determine who gets into the game, but once everyone shows up, it balances the team for a fun match. In other words, in simpler terms, if you have two really good players in the same lobby, they will be split up on both teams, one good player on one team, one good player on the other team. If you have, you know, four people that are lesser skilled, you're gonna get two bad players on each team. So it's just going to try and balance it as much as possible after a random subset of players are put into a lobby. So that's very good. That's not skill-based matchmaking. That is not skill-based matchmaking. That is ping-based matchmaking and then team balancing. So that's very, very good. Now on to the last two sections, but they are literally just as important. So pay attention, input device lock. Some playlists will enforce input device locking, such as ranked. In other words, if you are trying to go into a ranked lobby as a controller player, but you try and trick the matchmaking system right before the game starts to switch to keyboard and mouse, the game will not allow you to do that. So that is a W. Once you get into a ranked play lobby, you must stick with whatever, you know, input device you are using. Lobby persistence. Now this has been missing in Call of Duty for a while now. People are craving the old lobbies to come back. Persistent lobbies, trash talking, etc. That is here in casual playlists. The default behavior lobbies is to be persistent between matches. This means subsequent games or subsequent games will often include the same players from previous matches. Teams, however, are shuffled each match, just like 
OG Call of Duty. It's back. And then lastly, we have Waiting Queue right here. It's possible for players to queue for an open slot in two situations. If a player joins a party, that is already in a full team or if a player joins a specific lobby that is full. So this isn't like too serious, but it is a nice quality of life feature if you are trying to join your friend or a specific lobby. But the fun doesn't end there. Let's look at some people's reactions. And before we do, if you appreciate this video and more informational how-to videos in the future, I will be posting them all the time. Make sure to hit that sub and like button. Now let's get into it. So Juancho says, it's not going to make any difference. People will still play COD and keep complaining about it instead of moving on to another game. Fair enough. That is a very possible situation. However, Silva here says the only SPMM there should be is for ranked, nothing else. COD devs need to learn that. Much agreed. Now, if you want to respond to any of these in the comments, tell me your feelings, put them down below. And then this guy says, I can't wait to see this game. I'm going to leave Call of Duty. I'm tired, junk, Call of Duty. Fair enough. And then let's scroll down a little bit. But I thought all SBMM meat writers said it has to be in the game in order for the game to keep retention. I guess we better start pressing COD about it again if X Defiant does well. That is very true. If X Defiant succeeds without skill based matchmaking, Call of Duty will take a turn. I can assure you that. Party size affecting matchmaking makes me really happy. We went over that. That is fantastic. Good. They're doing it right. And then if we scroll down a little bit, the hype for it is already gone. Everyone says, doesn't look like it. This guy says, okay. He says, shut up, bro. You guys are so annoying. All right, fair enough. Finally, a shop with a brain. Fair enough. And how could people hate this? Because they don't want to see anything better than COD. Right. COD zombies can't understand, so they are mad. I mean, why are people mad? If this game is free, free to play, why are you hating on it? Just try it out. If you don't like it, then it is what it is. Why are you hating on a free game before it even releases? Why are people acting so spoiled recently? Damn. The Shore Angler says, My prediction is the lobbies will feel pretty much the same as COD's SBMM. This game will be just sweaty nerds thinking they are sticking to the man playing a more clunky and generic version of Call of Duty. And then the reply says, Played one of the tests and it was exactly this. The lobbies I got put into, first time playing, were actually more sweaty than COD. Horrible experience. Now what these people don't realize is play tests, betas, server test sessions are not for casual people. Only dedicated fans, probably really good players at that too, would only be playing server test sessions. Casuals would not be playing betas, which these people don't understand. And also, if they're struggling in those lobbies and thinking it's sweaty, it's because they suck. Skill issue. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lion says, I respect how they are blatantly going after people sick of COD. Will it work? Who knows? But I respect it. Amen. Amen. Men. Fun fact, SBMM being gone doesn't mean indefinite bot lobbies. Remember that when you still get bodied in about two weeks when the game is infested with washed up COD players and no casuals in sight. I highly doubt this. I think people misunderstand or underestimate how many people just play games, right? It's not just a sweaty audience that's going to play a game. There are always, always going to be players of higher skill rank and players of lower skill rank. And because there is no SGMM. It's always going to be a variety in games like X Defiant. And the team lobby balancing is always going to occur. So at the end of the day, if you don't want to be sweaty, then just get better at the game. It's literally as simple as that. And then finally, this guy says, yeah, right. I still think SBMM will be used. It felt like it during the betas. And then someone said betas and alphas aren't for casuals to notice typically. Isn't that what I exactly said <laughs> like a couple minutes ago? All right, but I think that's it, right? That's probably it. Let me know your thoughts down below. If you want to stay updated with news, how-to videos, etc. I'm going to be your guy. I posted so many how-to videos for MW3. If you want to stick around, hit that like and sub button, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.